So, I filmed a really long video today. One on a completely different topic to this one. And it was absolutely f shit. I cannot stand expending unnecessary energy and wasting my time. That kind of stuff bothers me to the point of rage. But it did get me thinking about how I should deal with situations like this. Situations that get turned into a big deal when clearly they're not. I often preach a mantra of practice and muscle memory, both as a music teacher and in life in general. I often say you can't expect to do well in the important moments in your life if you haven't spent time dealing with smaller versions of that moment. So how you deal with day-to-day -day trivial problems I think is a good barometer for how you'll act when you have actual serious problems. This reminded me of an amazing book that I read quite a while ago called Anti-Fragile by Nassim Taleb. I got infatuated by the central idea of the book as a method for self-growth. He outlines three ways of being. Often this is referring to businesses or economics, but it functions brilliantly purely as a life philosophy. The first way of being is fragile. If you are a fragile person, you will suffer from shocks, crumble in chaos, fall apart during uncertain times. You will run from danger and disruption. And when the inevitable gut punches that life serves up come your way, you'll break. The second state of being is robust. If you are a robust person, you can withstand shocks without it changing who you are. You can stare chaos in the face unflinchingly. You have a high tolerance for life's uncertainties and you are at peace with the fact that you cannot fully know what the future holds. And then there's the third way of being, which is anti-fragile. This is something different entirely. An anti-fragile person becomes stronger after shocks and disruption. They thrive in volatile situations. Risk, danger, adventure, randomness and uncertainty are not threats to them, nor are they facets of life that you need to reconcile yourself with. They are seen as opportunities. They are desired. They are things from which growth can come. If you're trying to think of an example of an anti-fragile thing or system, then I'll give you a few. One surprising one that was in the book is the airline industry. Anytime there's a plane crash or a malfunction, the issue is investigated so obsessively and its solution adopted across the industry. When something goes wrong, the entire system improves as a result. A biological example would be the immune system. After being exposed to or attacked by an antigen, the immune system takes that information and stores it in its library. And next time that antigen decides to roll into town, there is an army waiting for it. Again, the entire system benefits from exposure to danger. Another example would be us. Human beings have the capacity to be anti-fragile you see this often with children, where they go from being dependent on their parents and gradually seeing the unpleasant and dangerous aspects of life and learning and growing from it, gaining wisdom and experience and insight, taking a negative experience and making a lesson out of it, building character. To say that any one of us falls neatly into one of those three categories is obviously wrong. We fluctuate through them at different times of our life. Being fragile and being weak sometimes is an inevitability of being human. And to deny or resist that in itself is a form of weakness. But to become anti-fragile, to wake up each day in an increasingly uncertain world with the determination to face volatility and chaos, not with fear, not even with a powerful, stern resistance, but with an open-armed embrace to welcome disruption and danger and mistakes and, on some strange level, to desire for certain things to go wrong because it's all simply fuel for growth. That is an aspiration I can commit to.